yeah uh and um i would like to jump straightly straightly to the presentation of our speakers today we're ho hosting partner solutions architect from gitlab peter Bujo, uh Ilya gross our gitlab professional services engineer um Anatoly, um, our GitLab uh, sales executive, and Sergei Kupiecki, uh, who is a software engineer team lead from Midgo. Uh, before we jump to the main part, I would like to take a moment to introduce you to CloudFresh. CloudFresh is a global partner of Google Cloud, Dendesk, Asana, GitLab, Microsoft, and Okta. We are trusted by more than 1,400 customers all over the world. Since 2017, we've been specializing in uh, development, um, implementation, migration, audit, administration, support, and training for the best-in-class cloud solutions. Also, I would like to highlight the unique benefits CloudFresh brings to the table as your GitLab partner. Beyond rapid deployment and expert implementation practices, we provide a proof of concept that allows us to illustrate the impact of GitLab solution in your specific environment. Coupled with AI innovations, special partner discounts, and multilingual support, we assist our clients according to their custom needs. We are proud to be chosen by industry leaders such as Deloitte, SoftServe, Surf, Circle, and others you can see on the slide. Uh, and we prepared something special for webinar attendees. We provide a free value stream assessment that, in simple words, is basically a roadmap from the current to desired state of the software delivery workflow. To claim the offer, just scan the QR code, fill out the form, and our team will meet you at the first discovery session. And one last thing from my side, we are offering these branded gifts to uh, people who ask the most interesting question to our speakers. So don't hesitate, ask any questions you may have and good luck to win these gifts. And I pass the word to Anatoly to cover the first part on boosting RAI with GitLab. Hello, everyone. Uh, so, return on investment is a very significant topic uh, when it comes to GitLab. Uh, but before diving into GitLab's numbers, uh, I would like to quickly start with uh, uncovering uh, the general definition of uh, return on investment. I'm sure, though, as it, most of you guys already know and uh, even use this metric to calculate the value that your SaaS platforms or uh, tools deployed on your own infrastructure provide still uh, let's touch on this topic to make sure everyone understands what we are talking about so return on investment uh, is also known as roi obviously this is a performance metric used to uh, evaluate the efficiency or profitability of an investment or compare the efficiency of a number of different investments uh, to calculate roi we can use the formula that you can see on the screen right now and uh, I would like to highlight that uh, the result uh, can be expressed as a ratio or percentage, whatever you prefer. Uh, so now, as we understand uh, what is ROI, uh, how it is uh, calculated, I would like to talk about it, particularly in the context of GitLab. So GitLab offers a comprehensive platform for software development, uh, project management, and security delivering tools for collaboration, version control, issue tracking, CI-CD, and code scanning. Uh, beyond these technical capabilities, GitLab drives substantial returns on investments through. Uh, we can see a couple of points uh, highlighted on the slide, and the first will be efficiency and collaboration. So what we can say here, uh, I'm sure you all guys know Forrester Consulting. So they found a 230% ROI over three years for organizations using GitLab uh, credited to improved productivity. Uh, GitLab CI CD automation uh, can reduce deployment time by up to 90%. Uh, let's move on to quality and innovation topic. And uh, organizations using GitLab reported a 50% reduction in bugs and uh, defects, enhancing code quality. Uh, also, I would like to say is that, uh, once again, uh, the source here is GitLab Block, uh, that uh, continuous delivery with GitLab uh, leads to a 200x faster time to market. Uh, let's move on to cost savings. Uh, so consolidating tools into GitLab uh, saved a medium-sized enterprise uh, $1.5 uh, million annually. Uh, risk mitigation. 
uh, GitLab reduces project delays and failures by 40%, enhancing project outcomes. And uh, one more point here is actually um, very connected with uh, the final uh, point shift in security left. Uh, security features that are built in GitLab, uh, they mitigate security risks, protecting valuable assets. Uh, and speaking about uh, uh, shift in security left, uh, GitLab promotes this methodology or approach or practice, uh, however you want to actually call it, in order to integrate security practices early, uh, reducing the impact of security incidents. Uh, also, high-performing organizations implementing DevSecOps practices experience 50% less time remediating security issues. Uh, I would like to continue with a couple of uh, cases that I prepared for you. And uh, the success stories of uh, Credit Agricole and Deutsche Telekom uh, vividly illustrate how GitLab transcends being merely a tool. It emerges as a strategic investment uh, driving substantial ROI. Uh, by enhancing efficiency, fostering innovation, reducing costs, mitigating risks, and prioritizing security, GitLab empowers organizations to achieve their business objectives in today, uh, today's competitive landscape. So let's dive deeper into the numbers uh, behind these two success stories to understand how GitLab delivers tangible benefits for organizations. And uh, I propose to start with Deutsche Telekom. Obviously, uh, one of the world's leading integrated telecommunications companies, as they implemented GitLab to modernize their software development practices. And uh, by adopting our platform, uh, Deutsche Telekom aimed to improve collaboration, accelerate development uh, processes, and enhance uh, productivity across their teams. Uh, with GitLab, uh, Deutsche Telekom reported a significant reduction in release lead time by 50%. And uh, this improvement indicates to me a substantial enhancement in uh, time to market for new features and uh, updates. Additionally, Deutsche Telekom experienced improved code quality and collaboration leader, uh, leading to fewer defects and enhanced team productivity. Uh, while specific ROI figures may not be available, the tangible efficiency gains, reduce release, uh, release lead time, and improved code uh, quality and collaboration contributed to overall cost savings and productivity improvements for Deutsche Telekom. I will quickly move on to the Credit Agricole case, and uh, you also know them, uh, a leading French bank. Uh, they leverage GitLab to streamline their software development processes and improved efficiency across their development teams. Uh, with GitLab, Credit Agricole aimed to enhance collaboration, reduce manual effort, and uh, accelerate project delivery. And uh, once again, while specific array numbers in uh, this case, which is obviously uh, publicly available, uh, they might not be uh, publicly available. I mean, the array numbers. Uh, but Credit Agricole achieved a 70% reduction in time spent on code reviews after implementing GitLab. And uh, this efficiency gain, it indicates significant time savings in development workflows, leading to faster project delivery once again and enhanced productivity. So additionally, GitLab's integrated platform facilitated enhanced collaboration among global teams of uh, Credit Agricole, uh, resulted in improved uh, project outcomes. So overall, the adoption of GitLab contributed tangible efficiency gains and productivity improvements for the company, for the bank, uh, driving notable benefits uh, for the organization. So now, uh, when we are uh, armed with deeper understanding how uh, GitLab can drive ROI, uh, you might be wondering uh, how to assess the potential benefits for your specific organization. And uh, my response uh, to those guys who would come up with such a question would be that uh, GitLab offers a dedicated ROI calculator on their website, uh, making the process uh, very straightforward. So the first thing you need to do is to access uh, the calculator. Uh, you can simply navigate to the GitLab ROI calculator page. After that, uh, input information, uh, like details about your organization's development team size, uh, project workflow, uh, workload, uh, current tools, and uh, developer costs into the calculator. Uh, after that, you can review the results. 
so the calculator will generate an estimate of potential uh, time and cost savings, increase productivity, and overall a rise that your organizations co could achieve by uh, switching to GitLab. Uh, then you can analyze and customize. Uh, you can take a close look at the results provided by the calculator, and uh, you can also adjust input parameters to reflect different scenarios and uh, see how they impact the estimated ROI provided by um, calculation provided by um, the calculator on the website. And finally, uh, the most importantly, of course, is to use results for decision making. Um, armed with the information provided uh, by the calculator, you can make uh, informed decisions about uh, whether adopting GitLab Alliance with your organization's goals and uh, requirements. Uh, so by leveraging insights uh, gained uh, from the GitLab ROI calculator, you can confidently evaluate the potential benefits of implementing GitLab within your organizations uh, and make uh, data-driven, first of all, uh, decisions about your development tooling strategy. So as we conclude the discussion uh, around uh, GitLab's ROI potential, I want to emphasize that, as you can see, uh, yeah, understanding and maximizing ROI is crucial for any organization's success. So if you will have uh, any further questions or inquiries regarding uh, GitLab ROI calculation, um, please uh, do not hesitate to reach out to me and I will be available uh, via email pas at cloudfresh.com and of course uh, more than happy to assist you. Uh, so now I would like to thank you all for the attention and uh, pass the microphone to our next speaker. Uh, Sergey, stage is yours. Um, thank you. Um... One second. Yeah. Uh, can I have rights for presentation, Irina? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. I mm, I believe I shared it, but one second. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Sergei Kuplietsky. I'm a software engineering manager, and uh, I'm working with uh, GitLab for about six years. And uh, today I'm excited to share with you how GitLab can be used to increase efficiency of development and uh, improve collaboration within your teams. Uh, and uh, it is important uh, because, as you know, speed and quality are key factors for product success. And uh, as uh, engineering manager, I'm constantly looking for ways to optimize uh, development processes. And uh, uh, GitLab, and particularly GitLab CI, is a great tool for that. Um, is there a question? Or uh, it's okay, yes, but we will cover it in the Q&A oh. session, so you can get yeah, more. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, GitLab is an uh, integrated uh, platform for uh, managing the software uh, development uh, lifecycle, offers a wide range of tools for automated tests and code reviews, uh, application deployments, and uh, as well as uh, ensuring code security. And uh, it not only accelerates <clears throat> development process, but also uh, encourage uh, the creation of uh, higher quality products. And uh, today we will delve uh, into the topic of uh, automating port quality control with GitLab and uh, consider how its integration with other tools and uh, services can uh, enhance uh, team interaction and uh, make the development process more transparent and efficient. Um, this is uh, an example of uh, typical stages of uh, development uh, lifecycle, no matter the methodology, for example, from waterfall to agile or Kanban. And uh, basically, on uh, each of the stages, you can use uh, GitLab uh, to increase uh, team's uh, efficiency. So, uh, for example, 
uh, as you know, the most uh, effective tool to ensure code quality is uh, code review, uh, where developers uh, examine each other's code for potential issues, uh, discuss improvements, and uh, share knowledge about uh, the code base. Um, however, this process uh, can lead to uh, release delays and uh, increase the number of uh, tasks in uh, work in progress or in worst case uh, scenario, uh, even create a bottleneck uh, if the review is conducted by uh, only one person. <clears throat> but uh, not everything that is uh, checked during uh, the review process needs to be manually checked. <clears throat> Most checks can be delegated to automated linters and tests uh, uh, that uh, run on CI and uh, it significantly reduces the time uh, required for reviews. Uh, GitLab offers uh, a wide range of uh, standard templates for code quality and uh, vulnerability checks and uh, other potential issues uh, in the code, allowing uh, security teams and developers to find and fix uh, vulnerabilities and bugs uh, at early stages of development. Uh, but uh, also you can uh, create your own custom templates, uh, enabling the adaptation of uh, review process to uh, the specific needs of your project. And uh, <clears throat> uh, however, if, um, uh, if no automated uh, code quality checks were previously implemented uh, in the project, uh, applying them across the entire project uh, might be too time consuming and uh, expensive. Uh, and in such cases, it's uh, recommended to use uh, quality gate mechanism. Uh, it involves uh, setting a baseline uh, level of uh, code quality, for example, current one, and uh, that must not be uh, diminished uh, with the addition of new code. And uh, this approach allows for gradual improvement of uh, code quality without uh, the need to fix all existing uh, issues uh, at once. Uh, quality gates can be done uh, manually, uh, configured in uh, GitLab templates, or by using integration with uh, tools like SonarCoop. Um, and uh, also GitLab, uh, GitLab allows us to monitor key uh, metrics while uh, dealing the, uh, with the merge requests, uh, such as uh, code coverage and uh, uh, the number of uh, new errors uh, detected during merge. Uh, and uh, on the slide, we see that uh, the one of the job uh, has failed, you know, this one, and uh, it's uh, mm, marked uh, in orange, uh, which means that we allow code uh, with errors to pass, uh, but in uh, the next stage, uh, we, we can uh, ensure that uh, the number, uh, total number of uh, errors uh, does not increase. Uh, also, GitLab widget can uh, can uh, assist in this uh, uh, because it is uh, displaying uh, the points by which uh, uh, the code quality has changed. And uh, in uh, this example, it's uh, code quality degraded on uh, 51 points, so uh, this metric S, uh, can be declined. Uh, so uh, the same uh, applies to code coverage, and uh, uh, here you can see that uh, the code coverage also uh, has been decreased uh, uh, in this uh, merge request for less than one percent. Um, yeah, uh, I want to share one of my successful uh, automation cases in project uh, Midgo ID. Uh, beyond uh, the quality of uh, the code itself, uh, it's uh, equally important uh, for changes to be tested and uh, to match uh, the design. Uh, however, changes uh, made in one place uh, can lead to unintended uh, alteration uh, somewhere else. And because of this, uh, the scope of testing often uh, extends uh, beyond the pages uh, that have been changed uh, to include other critical uh, pages as well. And uh, uh, to reduce, sorry, uh, to reduce, uh, mm, sorry, one second. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, to reduce uh, the time spent on uh, such checks, uh, I implemented uh, automated uh, visual regression tests 
and uh, the tests uh, uh, compare uh, the current UI uh, after changes uh, with the expected outcome and uh, highlight any differences. And uh, I used uh, GitLab CI and uh, Playwright uh, as tools for this purpose. And uh, as a result, uh, the time spent on manual testing uh, was decreased by about uh, 30%. And uh, this significantly improved our team efficiency and uh, allow us to deliver features uh, to production faster, but with the same quality. Um, besides code reviews, uh, I also automated some checks for later stages of uh, development uh, cycle using GitLab. Uh, for example, uh, in uh, definition of done for tasks, uh, there was a specific set of points for some uh, services uh, that uh, needed to be completed by developer uh, before a task could be considered done. Uh, I, I extracted uh, I extracted part of this uh, into a template that is uh, automatically applied when uh, creating a merge request, uh, reminding uh, the developer of uh, what they need to do. Uh, and uh, additionally, this project uh, also has a specific set of branches, and the branching model requires merging branches uh, at certain order. So uh, I've also automated this part and reduced the time spent on uh, repetitive uh, manual tests. Um, and uh, in general, uh, if certain actions are repeated in uh, the workflow, it's highly likely that uh, they can be automated and uh, shifted to CI. Um, also, GitHub uh, uh, offers uh, flexible uh, integration capabilities with uh, multiple uh, of uh, other tools, either uh, out of the box or through APIs or uh, webhooks. And these integrations can be used to create project management system that facilitates uh, monitoring, managing, and uh, analyzing uh, project data. And the next case of uh, release notifications uh, in Slack uh, serves as an excellent example of uh, business value of such integrations. Uh, my other project is an uh, internal uh, UI kit library that contains various front-end uh, components uh, used in uh, different projects. And uh, however, as maintainer, uh, I'm not always aware of who exactly uses uh, it and uh, who needs to be informed about changes. Uh, initially, I solved this problem by manually posting uh, messages in Slack uh, about new releases, but uh, firstly, it's easy to forget to do this. And secondly, as I mentioned earlier, uh, any repetitive actions uh, can be delegated to CI. So uh, I set up uh, I set up uh, automatic generation of the change log. Uh, it's on the left, and uh, publication of uh, releases of uh, uh, releases with uh, release notes. It's uh, on the right, and uh, also I added uh, notifications in Slack uh, about the releases with uh, all necessary information, uh, and it's how it looks. And this uh, ensures uh, instant and uh, widespread uh, sharing of uh, information among uh, all interested teams. Uh, and uh, this gives us uh, these advantages. Uh, teams start uh, working uh, on new tasks and fixes faster since uh, they are informed about the uh, latest changes. Uh, our team uh, get more feedback about releases and uh, updates, and uh, it allows uh, us to detect errors and uh, fix them more quickly. And uh, also, there is closer interaction between uh, development, QA, and uh, operational teams, uh, as, all, mm, as they all uh, receive uh, current information basically in real time. Um, yeah, and uh, in conclusion, uh, by using uh, GitLab CI and uh, integrating it with uh, key communication and uh, monitoring tools, uh, I not only optimize work uh, processes, but also create conditions for uh, closer interaction within a uh, team and uh, between teams, uh, which is, I think, it's uh, foundation for successful uh, implementation of uh, any project. Um, feel free to contact me in uh, any social media. Uh, I'm passionate about uh, GitLab and GitLab CI, and uh, it would be my pleasure to tell you more. Thank you. Thank you, Sergey. Uh, let me resume the presentation. Just one second. Okay. 
everything and we are moving here. Yeah, Peter, the stage is yours. Okay, thank you, Irina, very much. Hi, everybody. My name is Peter Bojo, and I'm a partner solutions architect at GitLab. My role essentially is to work with our excellent partners like Cloudfresh to help their customers at the end of the day. And in this short presentation of mine, roughly 10, 15 minutes, I would like to show you an actual demo of a particular feature of GitLab, which you can already see on the slides, which is called Auto DevOps. And I believe this particular feature of GitLab really nicely wraps around or, or highlights all the benefits that my great colleagues, Sergey and Anatoly, have been talking about previously. So how you can, you as a user of GitLab, as a customer of GitLab, at the end of the day, a user of the of the tool itself, right? So GitLab as a, as a DevOps tool, how you can really get started with GitLab and get the most amount of value out of the platform in the shortest possible time. That's what I would like to demonstrate today in this demo. But before I switch to that and actually show you how it's done in, in, the, in the GitLab UI, I just want to give you some background about Auto DevOps itself, because to be completely fair, it's a, it's a rather obscure feature of GitLab, so not many of our customers know it. I don't think we do a good enough job <laughs> in, the, in the marketing side of things, uh, advertising this feature, because I've joined GitLab roughly one and a half a year ago. And for me, when I learned about this, I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. <laughs> you know, it was just that, just that moment that, okay, this is big, this can be really useful for our customers. And I sometimes I wonder why don't we put that on the main page, honestly. But that's my personal opinion. Back to the topic. So from the documentation, that's a mouthful. So what GitLab Auto DevOps is, it's a collection of pre-configured features and integrations that work together to support your software delivery process. Nice. OK, if you are a software engineer like me, then like, OK, what does that actually mean? That's a bunch of nice words next to each other. but what does that do to me right on my day to day and uh, to translate this to more practical language at least in my opinion i would put it in a way that it's kind of like a scaffolding engine for for gitlab ci cd pipelines think about it as if you are a software developer let me start from that point that point of view if you are a software developer and you work in any kind of framework any kind of programming language here i took the liberty of coming with React and JavaScript, because those are very popular language and framework. So if you are a React developer, then you must know Create React, this project which you can use to just quickly set up a React project from, from zero, right? So just use that command in your command line with Node.js, and it will set you up with a default project template. And you can just start putting in the logic of your application into the into the into the repository so that's pretty much what auto devops is just for gitlab pipelines so instead of initializing your repository with code because that's obviously outside of the scope of gitlab that's up to our customers and whatever frameworks they use it helps you to get onboarded into gitlab ci cd so you already have some code a project which you might have actually created with create react or, or any other kind of application right so the example I'm using here is React and JavaScript. And in the demo, I will be using JavaScript as well. But it's really important that Auto DevOps is more or less completely independent of the language you use. Obviously, we don't support every existing programming language for sure, but the most mainstream and popular ones we do. I mean, GitLab Auto DevOps does. So that's what GitLab Auto DevOps is on a theoretical level. And there are three main benefits. There are, there are a lot of benefits of using GitLab Auto DevOps, but I just listed here a couple that I would say the most important ones. So the first one that I already mentioned that it helps you to get started quickly, right? So you are a DevOps engineer, you are a developer, doesn't really matter. You are a person working with code in GitLab, right? You onboarded your project into GitLab and you want to automate your, your processes, namely, building and testing and deploying your application and it's just so much right so gitlab ci cd pipelines are extremely powerful but they are extremely complex if you want to use everything under the sun 
GitLab Auto DevOps can help you with providing a set of standard tasks, stand a kind of like a standard pipeline, a sort of best practice that you can use as a starting point to get started quickly to have something that builds and tests and deploys your application automatically. But it can also be a great foundation for you to, as a software engineer or a DevOps engineer or an infrastructure engineer, doesn't matter, actual role, to, to learn more about GitLab, to see an actual working example, not just go through the documentation, because honestly, that's super overwhelming. If you read it from A to Z, the whole thing is just too much. But it will give you a feel for what's possible to achieve with GitLab pipelines overall. And of course, this is a standard set of pipeline, as you will see in this presentation. So no one size fits all, obviously. You can use this auto-generated pipeline as a basis to, to customize, to build and to expand with your own needs and requirements. So, so GitLab CI CD can really work for you and not just work overall. Important thing is that it's a free feature. I mean, if you bought GitLab, then GitLab Auto DevOps is there. It's just a, it's just a standard set of pipelines, right? So it's not like something that you have to pay additionally for or anything like that. Our pricing is very transparent. It's included in in the in the license. So without further ado, let me actually switch to my to, to, to desktop. I just need to find the share button which i which i'm not allowed to do irina can you make me a presenter so i can i can share my screen of course of course thank you awesome yeah, thank you fine. very much it's great and i should be able to share this window with you. Okay, all good? All good, awesome, okay. Okay, so what you see on my screen, as you can see, pretty generic security demo. I wasn't extremely creative when creating this, but that's not the point here really. So it's a, it's a GitLab project that you see on my screen, a very, very simple one, a JavaScript, Node.js application, literally a hello world application right so it's it's basically if you are familiar with the javascript word it's an express application express framework application that just returns an html file that's all of it but it's luckily it's complex enough to for me to demonstrate for you what auto devops can do and how does it work so for those of you who are already familiar with gitlab you might know that in order to have a gitlab pipeline you need a gitlab ci that YAML file in your repository. To that, that's what defines your pipeline essentially as a YAML file. As you can see in this repository, there's nothing like that. So it's basically this repository can be hosted anywhere. It's completely independent of what uh, DevOps platform you are using. And that's what I really want to demonstrate here, right? So it's not like you have to prepare your project for auto DevOps. There are a few requirements for sure, but I mean, for example, use a programming language that is supported. That's what I mean by requirement. But it's not like you have to put in a lot of time in order to accommodate auto DevOps in your project. You just put your project on GitLab and you just literally go to the settings here, settings, CI, CD, auto DevOps, default to auto DevOps, check, save changes, and you are good to go. That's all of it. That's all you need to do in order to have auto DevOps for your project. And uh, what happens under the hood when you do this is that GitLab will recognize this. Okay, this project doesn't have a GitLab CI CD file, but it has this setting turned on. So whenever there's a change being pushed to this repository, instead of looking into the repository for a pipeline, which is obviously not there, as I showed you, I will just run Auto DevOps. And what Auto DevOps does without getting into the really deep technical details. I will set you up with all the documentation if you are curious about that. So how how Auto DevOps works under the hood. What happens is that, let me open this particular pipeline run. So Auto DevOps will generate essentially this pipeline. It might be a bit different depending on your project because this is a JavaScript project. So for example, we will have a Node.js scanning task, obviously. 
not a not .NET or a Java or a C++ scanning task. If it was, if it were those languages, then we would have those, right? So the way it works like that GitLab essentially looks at the content of your repository, checks what the programming language you are using, what the framework you are using, and it will set you up with a with a default set of tasks in in a pipeline. As you can see, it has many stages. I won't get into the details of all of those because honestly, we will be sitting in this call until tomorrow this time, if I would go step by step, one by one. What I would really like to demonstrate for you is that it's a fairly complex pipeline. So it has building, testing. It has even some deployment into production system. It checks browser performance, all that stuff, dynamic application security testing, so like really advanced stuff. and. The thing is that I really want to just iterate on that you didn't have to do anything to get this, right? You just turn on the checkbox, bam, it's there. And um, to, to get the feel for it, so you get all of these tests, all of these building stuff, and it's all there, right, out of the box. But if you take it one step further, because what I'm talking about right now or up until so far, you didn't need anything, right? It's a Git, standard GitLab installation, your repository, and it goes and it works. But if you happen to have a Kubernetes cluster connected to your GitLab installation, which is way out of the scope of this demo, I won't get into the details how to do that. Let's just imagine you have GitLab, Kubernetes cluster, and they are connected via some integration. There's a fair deal of documentation of that. If you have that as well, then AutoDevops is smart enough to deploy an automatic test and production version of your application into that Kubernetes cluster. So let me show you what I'm talking about. If you go to the operate and environments feature of GitLab, here I have two environments, one production, one review slash redesign colors. This means that this is my production environment. Let me open that. As I said, the Hello World application, right? So you create an application with Express. That's what you get nothing fancy and then i have another uh, environment which is called the review environment this is basically i have a merge request open on my code and that merge request is about changing the colors of my application i won't get into the details of that but auto devops is smart enough to set up such a pipeline that it will create automatically without any manual intervention so right when i open this merge request this environment was created for this merge request. And whenever I change something in that merge request, that will be redeployed again. And I, as a developer, can immediately see a review, a preview, a test version of my application running in production, and not production, in a test environment, of course. So I open it. And as you can see, a change of colors had happened. The background became orange. The text became white. So again, nothing fancy. I just wanted to show you how powerful it is, how fast it is to get started, how easy it is to make this work, honestly. And yeah, that's more or less what I wanted to demonstrate in this demo. We will have some Q&A at the end of the whole webinar, but I'm more than happy to answer your questions if you have any. Before I hand back the microphone to my, to my colleagues, I just want to point out two things. That one is that whatever I'm showing you right now, is documented here in our official documentation, so docs.gitlab.com. I will paste it into the chat after my part is over. It's important that at GitLab, we don't have any internal technical documentation, right? So when I joined GitLab and I asked my manager, hey, Scott, where can I learn about GitLab? He literally sent me this link, like, this is our documentation, right? So there's no inform information internal, everything we have, Everything our engineers have who are developing the platform itself is documented here. This is very important, and this is open to you as well. Yeah. And the last thing for more advanced use cases, if you are already familiar with Auto DevOps or if you start playing with it and want to customize it, we have a dedicated page just about that. You can find it here in the documentation, customizing Auto DevOps, and also you can find the pipeline that's being used by Auto DevOps. So since GitLab, the product itself is open core, not open source, it's open core. It's a slight difference, but nevertheless, the source code of the application is on the public internet. That's the thing, GitLab itself. And here, this is the pipeline that's actually being used by Auto DevOps when you say turn on Auto DevOps, right? So 
if you are familiar with GitLab pipelines, the way I'm I'm scrolling through this, you might notice that it's incredibly complex. It pulls in a lot of stuff from many different places. So again, the goal of my goal is not to get into the details of that. I just wanted to give you a feel for that it's there, right? So if you are curious, how does it work? For example, how Auto DevOps recognizes the programming language my project uses. Here's your answer. Go ahead, dig dig deep, and and you will find exactly how it works and learn from it and replicate and customize to your needs based on this. So it's a great learning experience. And uh, pretty much that's it. Thank you very much for your uh, attention. And I will also share the link to this demo that I just showed you. It's a public project, so you will be able to look at it yourself, play around in the UI. You won't be able to modify it because it's my project, but even without a GitLab account, you will be able to see it and, and navigate around the UI yourself. So yeah, thank you very much. And I would like to hand back the microphone to Ilya, my colleague here. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. That was that was pretty cool. Yeah, and interesting for me. I, I hear it not the first time, but it's still mm -hmm. very interesting. Yeah. Uh can you give me just the co-presenter uh, rights and I will go on. Sure, Ilya. Yeah. Let me check. Yep. Great. All right. So uh, I will talk about the value stream assessment. So this is the service uh, we provide uh, for our customers to understand their current needs, their current problems, and yeah, to optimize uh, such kind of possible issues here yeah, that could happen in the organization, their SDLC process, etc. So uh, most organizations uh, aspire to make developers more efficient, yeah, deliver better products and do it faster. And for sure, they need to reduce security and compliance risks. But um, however, manual things uh, and processes uh, impact their overall uh, software delivery speed and their overall performance yeah so uh, time duplication idle waiting uh, lack of visibility into the software delivery so uh, all of that impacts the performance uh, of the employees of the developers uh, devops uh, specialists etc yeah so uh, what we propose here a value stream assessment it's kind of collaborative exercise yeah between the our team and stakeholders from the customer team yeah from your team so uh, it includes planning session uh, a workshop with your team yeah which which takes time and executive presentation to summarize our findings during the process yeah so as an outcome you will get kind of path yeah with the recommendations uh, from our side uh, in the areas of software delivery process and tool set improvements, um, you know, including some recommendations to retain, integrate, uh, replace specific tools and yeah, to meet organization goals, uh, which we are going to find out during the session. So we work uh, by the plan. You, we will send the presentation to you in the end of the webinar. So the first stage of value stream assessment session is planning session. Yeah. So we prepare the organization for value stream assessment. We are scoping. So we uh, scope value stream transformation charter. Uh, we form teams and logistics. So it's kind of who, when, and where do the process. Uh, let's go on. Yeah. So and. As in transformation charter, we are going to find current state problems and business needs for sure. Yeah, it's kind of list of two, five reasons uh, driving the need for improvements. So why are we doing this? Yeah, for example, market conditions, uh, as you said, as you see on the example, uh, competition, regulations, people, etc. Yeah, so we are confirming their ideas why we need to do this. Next one, uh, performance improvement objective. So we need to understand how aggressively we want to improve during the process. Uh, we are getting some metrics, deployment frequency, uh, time to merge, etc. Uh, and uh, the last step here in the planning stage, it, it, it could be not like, you know, it could be a bit out of scope. Uh, so the benefits to customer and business. 
we are getting a list of two five benefits we want to achieve it could be measurable or not yeah so this is important uh, we want to achieve for example reduce uh, as i said it could be out of technical scope uh, reduce stress for employees uh, attract new people yeah improve work relationship uh, etc etc yeah so next mm -hmm. and next planning session uh, next step in the planning session will be the visualizing how to work currently gets done yeah identify constraints in this dlc uh, in the current state of this dlc and outline desired future state as you can see on the slide it takes time yeah three four hours or more depends on the um, how big the project is yeah and uh, the team etc yeah so how many people involved in the process uh the work through process yeah so we are collecting data and metrics uh we are digging deeper uh, and understanding identifying uh significant barriers and uh, yeah barriers to flow so key metrics process time lead time uh percentage complete and accuracy so it's many many metrics they are pretty open yeah for you you can understand which kind of metrics you will get in the end of the session and we have all this in our documentation and slides which we can share with you and summarize summarize and map details so we are getting the summary metrics uh total process time total lead time uh tpt tlt uh etc it's many many metrics and in the end of the second work review we are aimed to have a fully fulfilled uh value stream details document uh, a list of bottlenecks and possible improvements area that can um, fit into the future stage design process and we are getting into this future state design process yeah so this is the right work design yeah so our goal here is to determine which processes and steps are required for the value stream to be optimal and here we can remove some processes uh add some additional steps uh, into the current processes yeah and we are forming the questions so which processes add value and which don't uh, are all systems optimally connected yeah so we are getting into the tools we are checking out what kind of processes are currently run and which processes are optimal or which don't so yeah and here is very important stage making the flow mm, after we got all of this objective information yeah, yeah we have uh key metrics to improve uh we are getting the ideas yeah so uh making the flow for example we need to automate something uh reduce number of systems uh enable some so self-service or SaaS. Uh, deliver often equip developers with tools to fix the problem yeah for example we need some additional tools and we are lean in uh, countermeasures yeah standardized work uh, building quality visual management so everything we need uh, to optimize our work to deliver faster better uh, stable yeah and all of this uh the part of the making workflow uh, state in the uh, value stream assessment process itself yeah so uh to summarize everything i said what we are getting as an outcome um, from the vsa uh step by step yeah we are identifying current state uh, we are defining business goals and desired future state after this we are identifying constraints uh, based on this we can build a value stream map so the map for improvement to uh, optimize our workflow and conducting a cost benefit analysis where appropriate yeah so uh, as an outcome you will get a document uh, with the key metrics we found during the during the vsa uh, the things could be improved the things could be removed yeah uh, based on uh, everything we found during the process and you will have some kind of roadmap mm, 
to improve all of these things. And of course, uh, you can do it by yourself or we can propose, uh, as we did all of the things together, we can propose other services here yeah, to help you to uh, do everything better and faster, to deliver better, to improve the performance of your uh, employees. So I guess uh, that's all from my side. Uh, and I'm sure that we will share uh, all of the docs regarding the VSA uh, after the webinar. And thank you all for attention. Uh, and yeah, see you in the next session. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. Ilya. Uh, yeah, we will share all the information um, after the webinar with the presentation and recording. Um, thanks also to all speakers for sharing your knowledge and expertise. Um, I'm opening the Q&A session. Um, and if you uh, haven't already asked um, any questions you may have, you can do it in the chat or raise hand. Um, I saw some questions, but our speakers were quick enough to answer them in the chat. So um, I will just um, read out loud the question we received via email just before the web webinar. Um, so that uh, was from Jehan. I hope I'm spelling it right. Um, basically, I'm working on this microservice setup with Django and on the back end and React on the front end. Everything running smoothly uh, locally, but deployment proving tricky. The front end and back end talks to each other via separate endpoints. And I'm wondering if GitLab out of the box can tools can handle all that complexity. Specifically, I'm curious about how it streamlines the deployment process, integrates the different parts, and ensures everything runs smoothly. So I will ask Peter to um, address this one. Yeah, de definitely. That's a, that's a very, very good question, honestly. And, uh, and uh, sorry, just lost in all the, all the open windows. I just wanted to I share I just posted this. also in the chat. So <laughs> yes, no, thank you, thank you. I, I have that open. I was looking for a particular part in the, in the documentation. So basically, the way GitLab Auto DevOps especially the deployment part is it's very tricky if you get into the details of customizing it but it's it's not uh, overwhelmingly complex honestly as as basically as i already answered another question of yours in the chat that if you know docker on a user level right so you can write docker file if you can even write a ham chart then you are like absolutely good to go and basically you can customize the auto devops process many ways regarding if you have this kind of like microservice architecture i would point you at this part where i have it come on yeah basically anything on this page i would say so i i pasted it into the chat you will find anything everything about how the deployment part of auto devops work from my experience setting this up to be able to work with it, it's not a, not a big deal, especially if you already have such a microservice setup. I assume you have either Docker files or or a Docker Compose file or a ham chart. I'm not sure about the Docker Compose, to be honest, if that's supported or how is that supported. Docker files and ham charts are definitely supported, and you can find everything about those on this page. How to how to customize those. Thanks, Peter. Um, I don't believe we have uh, other questions for now, so we can move on to uh, the part we choose the winner uh, for our branded prizes. Ah, oh, 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 okay, we have we have one question uh, in the chat. Uh, is it possible to use GitLab Auto DevOps to replace Argo CD? Currently, we use the GitLab repository. However, for instance, maintenance, especially for extended components, keeping the deployment of individual deployments in sync. We additionally maintain Argo CD. So I think, uh, Peter, you can also answer this one. Checking, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the problem problem is that Auto DevOps doesn't support GitOps yet. So not just not just uh, Argo CD, but any other GitOps solution is not supported by by Auto DevOps apart from having a ham chart or having a Docker file. So basically, that's the extent of infrastructure management that Auto DevOps does. If you need more complex or or more advanced infrastructure management capabilities in your pipelines, then it comes to the point where you need to 
customize auto devops and then it's absolutely doable right so and but in that case it's it's still not replacing argo cd what you do in that case you orchestrate argo cd so the the act of synchronizing the state of your infrastructure with the state of your gitlab repository that that synchronization process you can you can orchestrate that from your auto devops at that point it's just a gitlab pipeline but like auto devops based or auto devops generated pipeline so i would say that's a highly advanced use case of auto devops not out of the box by any means but it's doable 100 percent the same documentation that i that i uh referenced above that's that's the point where you need to get started i would say but it's a awesome question great thanks um so the price yeah um goes to um peters as soon as you had the the um the most uh, amount of questions um can you please choose the one that you like the best i would say the last question for me that 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 was one of the best so i would i, I wouldn't even try to pronounce your name yasa or yasha but <laughs> that person i would i would nominate from my side <laughs> Yatsik. Sorry, okay. sorry yeah. for that. <laughs> thanks, thanks so much, uh, Yatsik. Uh, I will contact you after the webinar um, just to uh, sort all the details regarding the shipping. Uh, and thank you for your question and all other questions. Um, thank you for joining uh i would like to remind you about our special offer um on the free value stream assessment um please uh, feel free to scan the qr code fill out the quick form and meet our team on the first discovery session uh once again thank you for joining it's been our pleasure the webinar recording will be sent to you uh, soon and if you have any questions regarding gitlab or other cloud solutions feel free to reach to us via the website social media or at hi at cloudfresh.com um peter sergey Ilan, and anatoly thank you for uh to be being host today thank you for uh sharing your knowledge uh and everyone i'm wishing uh, a nice tuesday and see you soon thank you all thank you bye 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 bye, bye. bye. Nice day. thank you guys